The planet K218b has been making headlines again recently. This is because a few days ago, as of the time I'm writing this, a new paper claimed that hints of dimethyl sulfide, or DMS, a chemical that's mostly produced by marine life on Earth, was found on this planet. So a lot of news organizations immediately jumped on this, claiming it was a sign of life. Unfortunately, the reality is a bit more complicated. Dimethyl sulfide was not found on K218b with a high degree of confidence. In other words, the signal is nowhere near as strong as it's being claimed to be. There is still a lot of confusion as to what actually happened. But before we get into it, I will say this. Life still has not been found on K218b. Signs of life had not been found either. The only thing that was found was potential, unconfirmed evidence for what could maybe be a sign of life. There is nothing confirmed right now. So what actually happened? What is actually going on with K218b right now? The quick answer to that is nobody knows, so what are the possibilities? And is there actually a chance of life here? But first, it's good to have an idea as to what kind of planet this actually is. K218b is a mini-Neptune about 8.6 times more massive than Earth, half the mass of Neptune, that takes 33 days to orbit the red dwarf K218. It's the second of two planets in the system, with K218c not receiving nearly as much attention. It's also about 2.6 times larger than Earth in radius. Rocky planets very rarely get this large, and studies of the planet suggest it resembles Neptune far more than it resembles Earth. That's important to keep in mind whenever you hear any news about this planet. It's a mini-Neptune, basically a very small ice giant. This isn't a rocky planet, and if it does have water oceans, which we'll get to later, they probably wouldn't look like oceans on Earth. Its atmosphere is also hydrogen-dominated, which is again, more similar to a gas or ice giant than to a planet like Earth. But other than that, there's very little we can actually say about this planet. We know with high confidence it has methane in its atmosphere, and there's a bit of evidence for carbon dioxide, but it's contested. It was originally suspected that there may be water vapor too, though that's turned out to likely be methane. But that is of April 2025, the only things we definitively know about this planet. Right now, we know that K218b is a decently large planet that probably looks more like Neptune than Earth, with a hydrogen-dominated atmosphere that has methane in it, and other chemicals we haven't detected yet. Everything past this point is still highly debated and unconfirmed. So we don't know what the environment of K218b is actually like, and therefore also don't know if it has life or not. The reason people are talking about it is because of the presence of dimethyl sulfide on the planet. However, there are some problems with this as well especially the claim that DMS is only produced by life. That is just objectively not true. Dimethyl sulfide was found on the comet churyumov gerasimenko for example, and it's also been found in the interstellar medium. There are absolutely ways this chemical can be produced without needing life. And not only that, but right now, dimethyl sulfide has not actually been found on K218b. What was found is potential evidence for it. The confidence is currently not high enough to actually say DMS was detected. It remains only a candidate, and it is possible that it's actually there, but it's also possible that it's a false positive and there isn't actually any DMS at all. The recent paper claims that they detected DMS and or dimethyl disulfide on K218b with a 3 sigma level of confidence, which another article then claimed meant it was a 0.3% chance of being a false positive. This is the biggest problem with the whole situation right now. A 3 sigma detection of DMS with a 99.7% chance of being a real discovery was not actually found. I'll link a more detailed explanation in the description, but in reality, the paper didn't account for the entire spectrum of the planet. They essentially created a simplified model that only DMS and DMDS can explain, without taking into account a lot of other possibilities. This artificially raised the confidence of their signal, making it seem far more likely than it actually is. One exoplanet scientist, which I'll link in the description, goes as far as to say there was no 3 sigma detection at all, it was actually much closer to 1 sigma, with a 27% chance of being a false positive. And the 99.7% number is actually just a misinterpretation by the media anyway. So there's not a 99.7% chance of these chemicals being present on K218b, and it might be much closer to only 75%. In science, for a discovery to actually be called a discovery, there has to be less than a 0.00006% chance of a false positive, which 27% is nowhere near. So that's the biggest problem. Dimethyl sulfide wasn't actually detected. Only hints of it were, and the paper that found it used biased models that made it seem more likely than it actually is. It's also important to note that all papers claiming the discovery of DMS on K218b were led by one person. That same person has also worked on the majority of all papers about Haitian planets, which some people believe K218b could be. 
This doesn't necessarily discredit all of this, but it is important to be aware that right now, only one group of people is claiming this detection, and nobody has actually independently agreed with them yet. The existence of dimethyl sulfide on this planet, and actually the existence of Hyshian planets in general, is a lot less confident than what's being made out to be. So that's the second thing to be aware of. Right now, dimethyl sulfide has not actually been detected, and only one group of people is actually claiming it might be there. This of course can and will change in the future. This video is meant to age poorly, because exoplanet science is constantly changing, and new discoveries are being made all the time. There will be new information that will come out after this video is made that could provide evidence either for or against DMS on this planet. But right now, in April 2025, the existence of a sign of life on K218b is shaky at best. It is a possibility that the dimethyl sulfide is actually there, but it's important to note that it's far from the only possibility, and the chances of it being a false positive are still pretty high. Right now, there isn't enough confidence to actually call this a discovery. Also, just because dimethyl sulfide is only really produced by life on Earth doesn't mean that's the only way it can be produced. Lab experiments have shown it is possible to be produced without life being involved at all. And as I said earlier, it's been found in places we know don't have life. So even if the DMS is confirmed to be there, which again, it still has a long way to go before being confirmed if it ever gets there, it still isn't necessarily a sign of life. Yes, life can produce it, so it's still interesting, but there are other ways for it to exist. Life should only be used as an explanation when every other explanation no longer works. Is life on K218b a possibility? Yes. But is it the only possibility? No, far from it. But life becomes a stronger possibility depending on what the environment of this planet is actually like. So what are some scenarios for the environment of K218b? Well, there are a lot, and right now we don't know which one it is. Again, that will probably change in the future as we get more data about this planet. I am making this video fully expecting it to become outdated in a few months. But as of April 2025, we don't currently know what K218b is like, but there are a lot of possibilities. One paper confirms that methane exists on this planet, but doesn't find any significant evidence for carbon dioxide or dimethyl sulfide. They claim that all the data about K218b can be explained by it simply being an oxygen-poor mini-Neptune with no oceans or life. Basically, a smaller version of Neptune. That's probably the least interesting scenario of all of them, and K218b just becomes a typical mini-Neptune among hundreds, no life needed. It's a possibility. A lot of the other studies hinge on what exactly is found in its atmosphere. It was thought that there was water vapor in the atmosphere, though from what I can tell there's significantly less confidence in that now. Initially, observations from James Webb seemed to suggest the planet could have a liquid water ocean separated from its atmosphere, which could make K218b a very large ocean planet, with oceans hundreds of miles deep. If that scenario turns out to be true, then there is some additional credibility to the possibility of life, because in this case, liquid water would be present. However, James Webb also found that the concentration of water vapor in the atmosphere is very low, less than 0.1% of the entire atmosphere if it's there at all. If that's true, then there are two possibilities. Either the planet doesn't have oceans, or it does have oceans and has a very dry stratosphere that is preventing us from seeing the water vapor. There's also the possibility that it does have water oceans, but they aren't liquid, instead being in a supercritical state where you can't tell where the atmosphere ends and the ocean begins because it all blends together. Oceans can also be inferred by the lack of a detection of ammonia. Water oceans are good at absorbing ammonia, and because ammonia wasn't seen in the atmosphere, it could indicate water oceans as a possibility. However, oceans made of lava would also absorb ammonia, leading to the same result. And because K218b's atmosphere is likely extremely thick, a greenhouse effect making lava oceans is a possibility. However, lava oceans existing wouldn't be able to explain the presence of carbon dioxide, which has been suggested to exist here at lower confidence, but another study says it probably doesn't. The situation is complicated by the presence of clouds. There's some evidence of clouds made of either ice or liquid water being detected, but it's conflicting. Models of the planet also suggest that clouds made of chemicals other than water could also be able to form, but it all depends on the exact composition of the planet, which we don't currently know. Then there's even more complications when you add life to the planet. For dimethyl sulfide to be detectable, there would have to be 20 times more of it on this planet than there is on Earth. A biosphere could theoretically produce this, but that's completely hypothetical. We have no examples of life beyond Earth, so have no idea what exactly an alien biosphere would do or what its effects would be on its planet. 
One study suggests that if K218b does have a large global water ocean, then a biosphere is actually required to produce the methane detected in the atmosphere. But that's only true if it has an ocean, which as I'm sure you've seen by now, isn't known. There are scenarios where it doesn't have an ocean, and therefore the methane could also be produced in other ways. I'm sure you get the point by now. There are thousands of unique situations that would result in vastly different environments for K218b. There could also be other possibilities I've missed, and because this is constantly changing right now, a lot of the possibilities I've mentioned could already be out of date. It could be an oxygen-poor mini-Neptune, it could be a dry mini-Neptune, it could be a mini-Neptune with a supercritical water ocean that blends with the atmosphere, it could be an ocean planet with an extremely thick atmosphere, it could be a lava planet with an extremely thick atmosphere, it could be an ocean planet with life, it could be an ocean planet without life with a dry stratosphere. To confirm one of these scenarios is true, we would need more observations of the planet which we don't have right now. But it does seem that nobody outside this one group of people is particularly convinced that the Heishan planet with life scenario is very likely. My point in making this video is not to say that life definitely doesn't exist on K218b. As you've hopefully seen by now, that does remain a possibility. Maybe the dimethyl sulfide will be confirmed, and maybe we will find this planet does have water oceans after all. But I made this video so you can be aware that that's not the only possibility, and more importantly, that's not nearly as likely as it's being made out to be. The media likes to report on what's most exciting, and an ocean planet with life is far more exciting than an oxygen-poor mini-Neptune. So these other scenarios aren't given as much publicity as they should. So right now, I wouldn't take any news about life being found on K218b seriously. Right now, it's a possible but unlikely scenario, and there are a lot of other environments this planet could have. However, I would start paying more attention if 1. other groups come out and independently confirm they find evidence of dimethyl sulfide, 2. more data is gathered on the planet to get rid of a lot of these other scenarios, and 3. methods for producing DMS without life are ruled out as possibilities. If those three things start happening, then it could be time to start taking the possibility of life more seriously. But those things are currently not happening, so don't get too hyped yet. A lot of possibilities still haven't been ruled out and likely won't be ruled out for a very long time. Despite what you may believe based on other videos on this channel, I'm actually optimistic about life existing in the universe. That of course is just my opinion because there's been no actual detections of it. I wouldn't put it outside the realm of possibility that alien life is confirmed in our lifetimes, and I absolutely do believe life exists beyond Earth. But I'm also realistic. K218b is interesting, but it's not a particularly strong candidate for alien life. Is it a candidate? Sure. But have signs of life actually been detected here as of April 2025? No. Could they be detected at some point in the future? Again, sure. But right now, they have not. If anything changes, I will be the first one to make a video about it. I want to find alien life. But I don't want our search for alien life to ruin the discussions about actual science. It's important to keep an unbiased perspective and look at every possibility. The last thing we want to do is claim a detection of alien life and have it end up not being true. Discovering life beyond Earth would be incredible, and it's important to not call it if you aren't 100% sure. And in the case of K218b, nobody is sure right now. It's also important to note here that a lot of these claims of life come from the media, not actual scientists. It's almost entirely the popular media saying life was found on K218b. So if it turns out to not be true, make sure to not blame the astronomers, they're not the ones exaggerating their discoveries. So right now, K218b is an interesting planet with a lot of possibilities. In my own personal opinion, I don't believe it has life right now. But there isn't enough data to actually say anything, and claiming there definitely is life or definitely isn't life this early on is really just jumping to conclusions. But that's with all available data as of April 2025, and things can and will change. Like I said, I want this video to become outdated. Because even if life is confirmed to not be here, that's still progress and still a learning opportunity. So if you see someone claiming that life was found on K218b, just remember that no, life was not found. Signs of life weren't found either. The only thing that was found was potential, unconfirmed evidence for a chemical that could be produced by life. That will change in the future, but that's what we know right now. Whatever K218b is, whether it be a mini-Neptune, an ocean planet, a lava planet, or an ocean planet with a living biosphere is a toss-up right now. We really just need to keep studying it. One day, we will confirm what this planet is actually like, and maybe that confirmation will include life. But there's a chance it won't, and until we do confirm something, chances and possibilities are all we have. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.